Hey everyone, I am John Neffer. I am the Trust and Connection Maximizer. I have a question for you. How do you want to be remembered? What do you want your legacy to be? When you leave your job, you change careers, you retire, how do you want people to think of you? How do you want to be remembered? Let's go back a little bit. Let's go to 1996. It was the fall. It was October. It was late afternoon. There was this cool breeze blowing. You could kind of smell the leaves changing, you know, kind of that musty, damp smell. And I was sitting on the hood of my car outside an ice rink in Zion, Illinois, with a trumpet in my hand. And I was playing a note here, a note there. I was just warming up a little, and I thought, oh, let's create a melody. And so a note... Another note, strung a couple together, a couple more, a couple more. Eventually, I had two measures, and then four measures, and then eventually, I had a 16-measure melody that was going to be the fanfare to this epic band piece that I hadn't created yet. Because right then and there, I had this idea. What if I wrote a band piece for my band to play at Banorama, which was the Citywide Band Festival in Kenosha, Wisconsin, happening in February? Now, the choice for this piece had to be really exceptional. The kids had to love it. The audience had to love it. The kids had to be willing to work on it day after day after day. And I thought, maybe I'll write a band piece. All of a sudden, I heard this voice. You can't write a band piece. You've never have written a band piece. I've written things before. I think I could do it. Do you know how important this piece is? Yeah, I do. I really do. I get it. What if, it, what if it's bad? What if the audience won't like What if the kids hate it? Yes, I know. That is a risk. If the kids don't like it, that is a risk. If the audience doesn't like it, I know. What have I got to lose if I try? Well, first of all, what have you got to lose? Your reputation, the kids' reputation, your school's reputation, your reputation with the other band directors? Need I go on? I said, no, no, that's good. You can stop. But what have I got to lose? If I fail, I'll pick another piece out. Oh, that's really good. Have you got that piece picked out? Well, no, not yet. Uh, see? Okay, you know, master composer, what are you going to call this band piece? I don't know yet. I just thought of the idea right now. Oh, got it. And the voice was gone. I thought, okay, really, what do I have to lose? I know, it's a risk. It could be the band's reputation, my reputation, the school's reputation. I thought, I'm going to give it a go. So I created this piece. It was... It was really fun to write. I was into it. I enjoyed the whole process. And I finished it two days before I was taking my band to Camp Timberleek for our winter band retreat. That's where we went and we dug into our band rama piece and we spent 10 hours preparing it. I passed it out. I said, you guys, this is going to be really cool. This is a piece where we have a chance to make connections and do all kinds of stuff. And this kid raised his hand. He said, what are you going to call this piece? I said, the indomitable spirit. Kokoro, the indomitable spirit. And he had this perplexed look on his face. Like, abominable? Really? I said, no, not abominable. Indomitable. Indomitable spirit. Oh. So we rehearsed it for 10 hours. Three hours on Thursday night. Six hours on Friday during the day, and another hour on Saturday. And I was ready to go. And I told the kids, I said, hey, this is going to be great. I said, we have a chance to do a world premiere. We have a chance to connect with our audience, to connect with the music, to connect with something that's bigger than us. And they were into it. And I said, you know, our final marker is going to be that when we are done, if we turn around and we look at the audience and they're standing up and applauding wildly, I said, there we go. Now, that may have happened, it may not, but the truth is we got done, and they were standing, and it was really this cool thing. It was epic. And I was really feeling good about myself because it was a risk. And I did it, and I tried it, and it was really something. So now, if we transport ourselves to 21 years later, 2018, I had decided to retire. I thought, okay, I want to have kind of my Mr. Holland's opus moment. I want to go out with a bang. Let's play Kokoro as the finale to the concert. And I'll invite friends and colleagues, and I'll invite uh, current students and former band students. It was great because what happened is people showed up. They said, yeah, I want to do it. I want to do it. And I had 
probably about 20 people who were in that original band. It was really interesting. One of the girls came up to me. She was a percussionist. She goes, look, Mr. Nepper, I have my original music. It was in pristine condition. She was so proud. And she was so excited to be able to play the piece again. I had two trumpet players who were in on the original fanfare that I wrote, that they played the solo. And they got together once a week for six weeks to be ready to go. It was exciting. They invited me to join them. So I did. And we got to this concert and we played. There was like 50 extra people on the stage with us and they stood up on this ladder. And I was a little bit worried. Could I get to the end of this piece and then go and talk to the audience afterwards? I thought it'd be really emotional. So I started the piece and it, I cued the timpani. Was it doom? Doom. Doom. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, doom, doom. And we were off into Kokoro, the indomitable spirit. And as I looked around, I saw a current student, former student, former student, my high school band director, college directors from the town, friends of mine who played in band when we were in middle school together. And the thing I got in that moment was that I had, over my course of 35 years of teaching, I had created a legacy of trust and connection, and I was connected in some way to every one of those people. And it was an extraordinary feeling to have this legacy of trust and connection. This legacy of trust and connection. I knew that's what I wanted my legacy to be. That's how I wanted to be remembered. How about you? What's your legacy? How do you want to be remembered? Think about that. Think about unleashing your indomitable spirit, letting it go, awaken your indomitable spirit. It can be extraordinary, but you have to make a decision to do that. Now, if you're interested in what we talked about, if you'd like to have me come and speak with your group, either virtually or live, if you'd like to have a call to, to really discover perhaps what you want your legacy to be or what's getting in the way of you creating something with your teams, with your organization, to figure out what that one thing is. That if you knew that, you could then go on to really create something extraordinary with your team where they were feeling connected to you, where they, there was a trust level there, where there was something where they knew they could come to you, they would be supported, they would be acknowledged, they would be validated for the way that you treated them. That could be your legacy. That could be a legacy of trust and connection. So if you'd like to have what I call a trust and connection discovery call, look at the link here, trust and connection call dot as dot me trust and connection call dot as dot me and think about unleashing awakening your indomitable spirit i'm john depper